Chancellor, and you're head of the National Security Council here. Clearly, there are a lot of preparations being made for the battle for Mosul, so-called. Are the Kurdish Peshmerga going to participate in that? Definitely. Uh, we have uh, looked at the plan. The plan has been prepared, and we've reviewed the plan. And uh, definitely, Peshmergas are going to participate. But of course, there will be some limitations of how far they can go. What are those limitations? Uh, there are some geographical limitations uh, that we uh, don't want to, to go to the areas that uh, will probably create some sensitivities. So, but uh, basically, on the plan, uh, it's very clear how far the Peshmergas can go. There are sensitivities in Mosul because of the cultural and ethnic sectarian makeup of that city. True. One of those sen sensitivities is that the Shia militias from Iraq may be part of this battle plan. Mm -hmm. What assurances do you have that that won't be the case? See, you're right. I mean, these sensitivities uh, have to be taken into consideration. Uh, the components of Mosul is very mixed. You have very different people of different backgrounds, ethnic, you know, ethnic groups, religious groups. So you have to uh, be considerate of uh, how comfortable these people are going to be with the incoming liberating force. Uh, some of the forces that are not well accepted by the local communities uh, must not try to get into the city basically to not irritate the population or to not push them to collaborate with ISIS. Do you believe them? Um, I have no reason not to believe them. Has the Peshmerga been given the resources it needs to be an effective partner? <clears throat> we have always asked for more uh, effective weapons and uh, resources to the Peshmergas. Unfortunately, they haven't been given what they have asked for or what they have deserved, especially in terms of uh, giving uh, protecting gears to the Peshmergas or the kind of equipments that they needed to quickly defeat ISIS, the kind of weapons that they needed. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they weren't uh, there for the Peshmergas, but Peshmergas were very determined to fight and defeat, defeat ISIS. Of course they did, but it was a, uh, you know, at a heavy cost, and of course we had many casualties. Of course, with uh, more adequate, better equipments, uh, our casualties would have been much less, and I think uh, the enemy would have been defeated much quicker. So do you feel used as Kurds? No. We don't feel used, but we feel as part of this coalition against terrorism that the international community should have had more uh, or felt more responsible to providing what the Peshmergas needed as the Peshmergas are fighting not only for their own cause but on behalf of the rest of the world. Why do you think they've been so uh, reluctant to help? Uh, there are some, uh, you know, like I said, political sensitivities perhaps, but uh, I think these are, uh, they, they shouldn't have been used as an excuse because this is a war against terror. And terror is a problem that the whole world is facing. Uh, not helping the Peshmergas to the extent that they needed to be supported for whatever excuse or reasons they might come up with, I think is not, uh, uh, is not fair or not logical to, to, uh, you know, to be correct. Uh, however, we do understand that perhaps there are some uh, regional players that may not be very happy and satisfied with the, the kind of weapons that Peshmergas receive as they think that the, the strength of Peshmerga is not in their best interest, which again, I would definitely argue that that's not the correct calculation of uh, how things are because uh, the strength of Peshmerga is here, the strength of Kurdistan definitely is going to uh, help not only Iraq but the entire region. When you say regional players, do you mean predominantly Turkey and to a lesser extent Iran? I don't want to name any country, but basically the regional players are very obvious, you know, in all the countries that are here. And what preparations are you making for what some people have warned may could be a humanitarian catastrophe? We have talked to the UN, we've talked to the coalition forces, we have talked to Baghdad, of course, and uh, here in the KRG we've done all we can. So far, you know, you, you know that we are, we are hosting about 2 million IDPs and refugees from the rest of Iraq and also from Syria. We expect 
a big uh, uh, inflow of uh, people from Mosul coming in towards here, toward uh, Kurdistan. So their camps have been set up. Uh, but of course, we can provide them shelter, we can provide them security, uh, but uh, KRG doesn't have the capability to take care of them and provide all the needs for this large number of people that are coming in. You talk about a short campaign, that would be everybody's preference in Mosul, but the pattern in Fallujah Ramadi is that it could take years. Is that something that you think is conceivable with a city this big? Uh, I think it's going to be a difficult uh, war in Mosul. Based on the information that we have, they're preparing to fight very fiercely inside the city. They are digging tunnels. They are preparing themselves to fight. But at the end, uh, during the war, I, I, you, know, you never know what happens. So they, they could collapse. You don't know, and that's what we hope. But we have to be prepared for the worst and for a long battle. Doesn't that risk besieging Mosul? and hurting the civilian population over a longer period? Well, <coughs> you know, uh, Mosul has been besieged anyway, uh, based you know, and besides what ISIS has been trying to provide and, and do for the people, or let people do for themselves, uh, that, that's a better phrase. Uh, they haven't allowed any, any assistance or anyone to, to go and reach this uh, civil population. So in any case, it, I mean, it's a hard time to begin with. If we talk about where uh, Peshmerga, the KRG forces, are now, they are beyond what used to be your frontier, if you like, uh, with Iraq. Will you give that territory back that has been retaken? In like your I words? said, let's, uh, uh, let's be clear on this. We don't think that we have taken anyone's land. We have just reclaimed what has initially been ours. Now we have the chance to make it right. We've made it right and we are going to defend it. So you're not going to move? Absolutely not. In that context, whether you're looking at Mosul, at Ambar province, at the relationship with Kurdistan, isn't Iraq going to face more civil wars even after the defeat of ISIS? Well, let's, let's be honest. Uh, ISIS is just a byproduct. It's just a result of some much bigger problems. The root cause of this problem is political to begin with. If Iraq had worked... Uh, for the last hundred years, uh, we wouldn't have had all these problems. It didn't work. It has never been peaceful or safe, not for, you know, for their own people or the neighbors. So it, you know, the mistakes have been made in the past, and now it's time for the world to realize that there is the time to look for new approaches, for new solutions. If, if things are not approached that way? Then uh, expect problems to continue. Expect... Uh, uh, terrorist organizations like ISIS to emerge again. Remember, I mean, before ISIS there was Al-Qaeda. So after ISIS there could be something else. There has to, the, the root causes have to be uh, addressed and, and the real problems have to be solved in order to prevent the, the, the rise of these sort of extremist radicalist organizations. Imagine if, if political uh, structure worked there could have been economic uh, prosperity, there could have been social order, there could have been peace among all the people. So there would, be, there would be security everywhere, so there would be no vacuum for these radicalist terrorist organizations to, to come and, and, and grow.